Originally, I conceived this as being a two-part video where I do each half of the show by itself, but for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do it as one sort of series overview and go forward from there with the movies that accompanied it. With that out of the way, sit back, relax, and count up your crimes as we take a look at Kamen Rider Double. Kamen Rider Double is considered the first series in what is dubbed Heisei Phase 2 for the Kamen Rider franchise. It premiered back in September 2009, ending its run in August of 2010. The series follows Detective Shotaro Hidari and his partner Philip as they solve crimes in the city of Futo. Our half-boiled detectives primarily focus on crimes involving Dopons, which are monsters created when a person uses a Gaia memory. These trinkets are USB sticks that correspond to a letter in the alphabet, each having its own unique ability. The heroes also use Gaia memories, except these are a little more refined and technologically designed rather than looking more organic and bone-like. Together, they transform into the half-and-half -half hero, Kamen Rider Double. Every episode follows a very similar Monster of the Week formula associated with the tokusatsu genre. Typically, a client approaches Shotaro asking him to work a case, which he accepts. Once he investigates the scene, he finds evidence of Dopont involvement. After encountering said Dopont, Shotaro asks Philip to use the Gaia Library, a database which holds basically all known knowledge in the world, to connect some dots and figure out the Dopont's next move. One crime scene visit later, and it's time for a good old fashioned monster fight. The heroes transform and finish off the monster with a final attack that destroys the Gaia memory. Pretty straightforward stuff. Utopia. In addition to the monsters of the week, there's also a secret group that's providing the evil Gaia memories. This organization is called Museum, and they're run by the Sonozaki family. The Sonozakis have their own golden Gaia memories which they insert into a prototype Gaia memory belt, which prevents corruption by the memories. Museum manufactures and distributes the bone-like Gaia memories in a very black market kind of way. Their main goal is to study the memories and use the data collected for something called the Gaia Impact, the concept of which varies depending on who's trying to do it. Weird, right? Getting back to the heroes, they also have Gaia memories, but unlike the ones Museum typically distributes, these memories look closer to proper USB sticks and provide double with additional powers. Shotaro's primary memory is Joker, which synchronizes with the user's determination to turn them into a skill warrior, whatever that means. Additionally, he uses the Metal Memory, which gives Double a Bow Staff weapon called the Metal Shaft, and the Trigger Memory, which gives Double the Trigger Magnet. Philip, on the other hand, has Gaia Memories that give Double some kind of power. First is Cyclone, which provides a speed boost and wind control. Additionally, there's Heat, which is pretty self-explanatory, and Luna, which allows for illusion casting and limb stretching. The last memory Philip has is Fang, which he uses with Joker to become Fang Joker, which is also the only time Philip is the body while Shotaro becomes the mind. To top it off, they have the Extreme Memory, which allows Shotaro and Philip to become one as Cyclone Joker Extreme, the obligatory final form of the series. Aksuru. Every rider since 2001 has had a secondary rider, and Double is no exception. Enter Ryu Terui, aka Kamen Rider Axel. Ryu is a police officer working in Futo with a grudge against the Weather Dopon, who killed his family after freezing them solid. He initially butts head with Shotaro and the Narumi Detective Office crew, but eventually becomes a close ally. Ryu has his own unique driver and uses the Axel memory. This gives him a snazzy red suit and the ability to become a bike. Yup, a common rider that becomes the thing common riders are known for riding. Also, he has another memory called Trial, which gives him a significant boost, with the catch being he can only use it for a brief time unless he successfully executes the Trial Maximum Drive within 10 seconds. Eventually, Bike Boy forms a close relationship with Akiko Narumi the obligatory side character and office director who is the daughter of Soichi Narumi, aka the founder of the detective agency as well as Shotaro's mentor, who became Kamen Rider Skull before his death prior to the start of the show. But that's story for another time. As comedic as the show is, given that it's a toku series primarily marketed in Japan towards children, it still takes itself seriously as a detective drama and has the characters going through pretty significant arcs as the show progresses. Philip slowly learns of his past and how it ties back to the villains, Terui finally gets closure by destroying Weather, which strengthens his resolve to work with Double to protect Futo from further Dopon crimes. Totoro grows into a more physically capable hero alongside Philip, and their partnership proves to be their greatest strength as the series comes to a close. Following the defeat of the Utopia Dopon, the detectives said farewell as Philip disappeared. One year later, Philip is restored and the two transform once more to defeat the Energy Dopon. After their victory, they declare anyone who puts their city in peril to count their sins. So, that's been Kamen Rider Double. It was definitely a way to return the series back to a smaller scale after the dimension hopping Kamen Rider Decay took us on a trip to various worlds, 
with different iterations of previous writers. Of course, the show wasn't all doublehead going on. There were a couple movies that followed the series' end, including the usual Rider Summer movie, two spin-offs focusing on Axel and the movie-exclusive Kamen Rider Eternal. In addition to that, there's Movie War Core, which is a crossover movie with double successor Kamen Rider O's. Hope you enjoyed my look into the series and look forward to the next Kamen Rider video I make. Catch you later.